Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, a peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah the Almighty be upon all of you. So, uh, dear viewers, uh, this video is in English. Uh, it means that throughout this video, I'll speak in English, and you can watch uh, the same video in Urdu or Hindi as well. I have given the link in the description below. So, uh, today we are going to discuss the articulation of vowel sounds. So far, we have discussed about consonants, pl their places of articulation, their manners of articulation. We also discussed the speech mechanism in the first lecture. So, uh, this lecture is important uh, because uh, vowels are actually a tricky a little bit uh, and we cannot understand their places of articulation quite easily as we can uh, understand about the consonants and the, uh, their places and manners of articulation so uh, let's start uh, I'll show you uh, some videos and I'll try to make this lecture interactive and I'll try my best that your concept will be clear after this lecture about the articulation of vowel sounds uh, and I also highly uh, recommend that uh, you must read uh, this book as well uh, because uh, and if you don't understand then you can watch my video so and if you do both things uh, then uh, it will be more better however you may uh, know uh, in what way you can understand just from the book or both from the video and the book but uh, I think the book is the best thing you you should never leave book at any cost you must read book uh, even after the video or uh, before the video so let's start first of all uh, let's discuss briefly uh, the difference between vowels and consonants and as we know that in consonants the air is obstructed uh, by the articulators uh, somewhere in our oral cavity in our mouth and then the air is released as we uh, and it is very clear and I have discussed in detail uh, that while producing consonants uh, most of the times or you can say every time uh, our tongue is making closure with another part of our mouth so therefore in consonants the air is always obstructed and there is a all there is always most of the time there is a closure as well so when there is a closure so air will be obstructed and uh, these uh, aspects we discussed in the previous lectures like places of articulatory gestures which was lecture 3 and the oronasal nasal process and the manners of articulation which was the lecture 4 so how vowels are different from consonants so in the production of vowels uh, actually articulators do not come close together or in other words uh, the tongue does not make contact with any part of the mouth so therefore the air stream is unobstructed so the air comes the air comes unobstructed while product uh, in while the production of vowel sounds or vowels uh, usually uh, we describe vowels uh, for example when we describe vowels in terms of their articulation so we mostly look at uh, two to three things the position of the highest point of the tongue that in the production of a certain vowel uh, where is um, what was the highest position of the tongue and the second thing we also look at the position of the lips which will come uh, which we'll see li later uh, that uh, that there are different position of lips in uh, different vowels and in the incoming lectures and uh, we'll discuss also uh, vowels in terms of their acoustics so uh, and actually we can describe more accurately um, vowels in acoustic terms uh, as compared to articulated terms which we are going to discuss in this lecture but we must know both aspects so if you can uh, look at these sounds 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एंड एक्चुअली इन फ्रॉम दीज सेवन वर्ड्स वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट सेवन वॉवल्स इन दिस लेक्चर सो दिस इज हीड हिड हैड हैड फादर इन इन फादर वी हैव टू लुक एट द फर्स्ट कॉन्सनेट गुड एंड फूड लेट मी जस्ट राइट द सिम्बल्स ऑफ दीज वॉवल्स ऑल दो Uh, this is not uh, the topic of this lecture, uh, but uh, just to uh, make sure you uh, some recognition of these. So in heed we have this vowel, and we usually put columns uh, after this to make uh, to make this uh, vowel long. Heed in heed we usually have this consonant. Sometimes it is just written as e. Then in head we have this consonant. Uh, these are the symbols actually i am not writing the alphabetic letters i am actually writing the symbols wh which are uh, which will uh, later see in ip as well and in had we have this vowel in father we have to look at the first vowel because there are two vowels in father fa and in the so we have to look at this vowel in good we shall look at this con uh, vowel and in food we have this vowel so actually these are the seven vowels which we are going to look at in this lecture and we'll describe uh, all of these vowels in terms of their articulation so if you sorry if you say these words uh, you will notice that your tongue and lips are in continuous motion you can do it in front of mirror so i'll recommend you just to keep a mirror in front of you or Uh, or after that lecture or during that lecture uh, you can just stop this and just try to pronounce these uh, words in mirror and just uh, try to focus on the position of your lips uh, you will see that in all these vowel gestures or in all these vowel articulations the tongue tip your tongue tip will be just behind the lower front teeth and the body of the tongue is domed upward domed upward mean there will be a bulge in your tongue at some position at some place in your mouth so actually now i am going to show you uh, some videos from the oxford advanced learner dictionary and we try to visualize uh, this aspect that the tongue tip is behind the lower front teeth uh, and another thing uh, in these first four words we have her at the beginning of each word so usually her is uh, sometimes uh, we consider it a consonant uh, but it sometimes seems so voiceless and uh, therefore we can consider it in uh, consonants and we'll see it later in detail however at if at the beginning of all these words if you just prolong her her Uh, or if you and just combine uh, the next sound like he he heed or hid had 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 you will notice that while the production of this h uh, and the incoming vowel uh, your tongue uh, is not moving uh, uh, at uh, any place in the mouth so therefore some h uh, is sometimes also called a pharyngeal sound so uh, now just look at uh, the videos so uh, we shall uh, listen to uh, two words medium and happy although in uh, as i have shown you uh, we have seen a word heed so the vowel which comes in heed e e Uh, it is also present in medium and happy and you we have just uh, have to focus on uh, the position of the lips and tongue and i'll show you e e e medium happy once again e e e yeah so medium just focus here e e 
yes at this position uh, you can see uh, that here uh, the tip of the tongue is uh, is not as visible as it should be but we can see it Uh, just uh, uh, that the tip of the tongue is just behind the lower front teeth. Uh, let me show you another example where uh, this is more visible. I think I should play like uh, yes. So actually, uh, now we'll uh, look at the consonant a, uh, which is actually uh, which was actually present in had a. Uh. Uh, why I am showing you? <laughs> you will. <laughs> come to know easily ah. yes this is the correct position perfect position so here you can look at uh, uh, the position that the, the tip of the tongue is just behind the lower front teeth as we have, we are talking about we were talking about uh, just now and you can see that the tongue is actually uh, here is uh, bulging oh, and there is uh, a doom in the tongue so or in other words you can say like this uh, so there is a bulge like this in tongue however the tip of the tongue is just behind the lower front teeth so actually this is the case where with all the vowels uh, which we have we are going to discuss here it is more visible So uh, the vowels uh, or the words we have just discussed in these words uh, there were four words which have vowel which we call front vowels like heat this e and then then in hid then in had then in had and we have just listened to uh, this vowel as well so why they are called uh, they are called front vowels so actually the highest point of the tongue uh, is in front of the mouth in these uh, in the vowels coming in head 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 and had i'm just going to show you with a figure as well so you will understand it better so uh, the vowel in head will be called a high front vowel the vowel in had will be called a low front vowel head and had are actually mid front vowels and in head uh, is mid high vowel and had has a mid low vowel so we are going to uh, look at all these aspects from the figure so you will un understand it more better so uh, this is the figure and uh, the first vowel is head second vowel is hid then had then and then had so uh, this is uh, vowel number 1 hid and you can see that why it is called a uh, high front vowel because the tongue uh, is uh, fairly close to the roof of the mouth as you can see and even if you keep uh, your tongue in this position like he and then breathe inward he and you will notice uh, that the co co uh, cold air is rushing through here if you breathe inward then we have hid uh, this is called actually uh, the mid high vowel why it is called the mid high vowel the uh, the answer is here the fourth vowel uh, which is in had actually it is called the low front vowel why why it is called the low front vowel because uh, the uh, first thing the tongue height is low so therefore is it is called the low and why it is called the front vowel because the tongue is actually uh, uh, the tongue is actually positioning here or the tongue is actually doomed he, uh, at in the front at the front of the mouth so therefore it is uh, these are all all these vowels are called front vowels and this is called uh, the uh, sorry low front vowel because the tongue is at lower position and this is called uh, because these two vowels uh, which are in he hid and had uh, these exist in do uh, in 
these two extreme vowels uh, uh, the high front vowel and the low front vowel so therefore these are combinedly called mid front vowels why mid front vowels because they actually bit, uh, they exist between these two vowels so therefore they are called mid uh, front vowels and the other thing you can also notice that actually this is the middle of the mouth middle of this area middle of this mouth mi middle of the mouth and, and then this is called mid high vowel because it is close to the uh, higher vowel uh, and it is called the mid low vowel because it is close to the low front vowel so therefore it is mid low means it is neither uh, very low it is neither uh, high and it is called mid high vowel because it is neither too high and it is uh, neither too low to call a mid low vowel so uh, these are the four vowels and these are actually called uh, the front vowels and now once again we shall visualize we shall try to visualize although it is very difficult uh, the position uh, of the tongue uh, actually the height of the tongue in all these vowels uh, through uh, that video so uh, we are going to look at all uh, these front vowels and we'll try to uh, notice uh, where the tongue moves uh, in all these front vowels as we have described their position so first of all I am going to uh, show you uh, the first uh, vowel which is the high front vowel which is E E which is actually present in heed so let's play uh, eat weak see uh, these are the examples uh, but the vowels are same although the example was heat so notice I'll stop uh, where there is the exact position e. E. so uh, because actually uh, she is not o o opening uh, her mouth as much uh, to be visible but actually because uh, this vowel is not so much that them we have to open our mouth and yeah, actually we can't uh, open our mouth while uh, pronouncing uh, this vowel sound uh, but you can notice that the tongue is uh, actually going going uh, close to the top of uh, uh, close to the roof of the mouth and actually she has not uh, actually yet pronounced uh, that that e completely but the, we can uh, clearly see that the tongue is going upward in close to the roof of, roof of the mouth e. so eat eat weak see e. so uh, once again once again just focus e. yes yes now now the tongue has gone close to the roof of the mouth so actually this is why it is called the high front vowel actually these positions are more clearly uh, visible in the x-ray film which actually we saw in the first lecture as well and I'll show you uh, in this lecture as well uh, now let's come to the other vowel which was e and um, uh, heed and which was actually present in hid uh, which was actually a mid high vowel and it is uh, present in this these examples uh, in medium in medium the second vowel e is actually this one and in happy the last vowel is this one mid high vowel uh, mid high front vowel e. yes once again once again uh, the tongue uh, is not actually I know that you cannot see even I cannot see but the tongue is not going as close to the roof of the mouth uh, as it should be e yes medium happy so uh, this is uh, this was the uh, mid high front vowel uh, then actually we have this vowel which was present in 10 had had which was actually the low uh, low mid uh, vowel low mid front vowel yes so, uh, so this one 
actually it is clearly visible yeah. no doubt because we have to open the mouth uh, to uh, sufficiently to pronounce this sound a eh, had ten so here you can see the tongue is actually close uh, from uh, to the beneath surface and uh, tongue is not actually uh, is uh, actually far away from the roof of the mouth so actually therefore this vowel is actually uh, the mid low front vowel or in other word mid low vowel uh, the same all right just we have to look at the position uh, i have separately made all these uh, visuals in a separate playlist now come to the last which was the had uh, which is actually uh, the lowest vowel in front vowels uh, we look at the example of heed hid had and had Uh, look, uh, it is clearly had so it is the uh, low front vowel uh, you may notice uh, that uh, uh, at face validity or you can say uh, at at this instance you may uh, uh, you may be thinking that uh, you might be thinking that uh, this appears to be same as was the previous vowel but as i have said you uh, actually i am just going to uh, i am just trying to uh, make a concept that how we can visualize these vowels uh, because it is always difficult to visualize or uh, to point out the exact position of vowels uh, at the page or in this way uh, it is more visible in acoustic terms or in extra film but um, because uh, it is uh, actually uh, you can say decided and it is actually proved and it is it is actually you can say fundamental that uh, that this uh, which vowel is the front or low vowel uh, front low vowel which is the uh, high front vowel which is the back vowel it is uh, decided because it has been uh, proved uh, by all for phoneticians but i am just going to uh, i i was just uh, trying to visualize this vowel so these are all front vowels we have seen uh, through this visualization and uh, uh, i also i would also like to show you x-ray film as well so uh, you just have to uh, focus on the tongue and how it moves you will notice um, uh, actually this is the same phrase on the top of his deck uh, which we saw in the first lecture but you will notice that the tongue will uh, come behind the lower front teeth the tongue will also move backward uh, so you will notice all these uh, differences here just focus so this is the tongue deck. this is on top of his deck yo on top of his deck so this is the mo uh, moving tongue you on can also see it again deck. and again and you can download it from uh, and you can watch it on the website which accompanies this book uh, uh, a course in phonetics by the name a course in phonetics and now uh, we shall look at back vowels and the first vowel in father the second uh, and the vowel in good and the vowel in food all uh, these vowels are actually uh, the back vowels a uh, uh, in good we have this one u and in food we have this one u so what happens the tongue or uh, the tongue will be at its highest position at the back surface of the vocal tract so tongue will be uh, at, uh, the tongue height will be in the back part of the vocal tract and i'll show you through the figure that it is just close to the uh, vocal tract wall and the vowels in these words are classified as back vowels so what happens the body of the tongue is highest in the vowel food so the vowel food is actually the high back vowel because the tongue is a, is at highest position in fo in pronouncing food o so o is the uh, lowest vowel or highest vowel 
then the lowest uh, in the first vowel in father so father in father the a a is the low back vowel and this one u u this is the mid high back vowel uh, so now we shall look at uh, we shall look these vowels from the figure so here it is father father you can see uh, this is the uh, wall of the vocal tract or the wall of the pharynx and if you look at this vowel father f uh, uh, this is the this is the position of actually the tongue this is the position of the tongue so you can see uh, that as compared to 6 and as compared to 7 it is actually at the lower position because uh, the 7 is here 6 is here and the 5 is here and the 7 is at the highest position close to the roof of the mouth and then 6 is actually close to the back wall of the pharynx uh, and 5th is actually uh, the most forward vowel so therefore if, uh, this is the uh, low back vowel and this is the uh, mid uh, mid low back vowel and or and this is one is the seven which is in food u vowel uh, this one actually it is the high back vowel so uh, now just try to we shall uh, just try to visualize these vowels as well from uh, the dictionary from the from these videos once again so uh, just to mention once again uh, that's uh, this uh, the vowel in father and this vowel is actually the mid high back vowel it is not the uh, mid low or something else it is a mid high back vowel because it is not as uh, you can say uh, as uh, far away that it it can be called as a low back vowel so it is a mid high back vowel and this one is the uh, low back vowel uh, sorry this one is the low back vowel this is the mid high back vowel because it is close to the uh, roof of the uh, vocal tract or vocal tract and this is the high back vowel so first of all if we look at uh, the high back vowel which was actually present in food and here it is present in ooze boot new although sometimes uh, the lips are so round that it is sometimes mm. not visible mm. now just like mm. try to look at it from the uh, mm. other audio yes this one Ooh. yeah uh, difficult to look at uh, but we can yes so uh, it seems that the tongue is going backward in the mouth and it also seems uh, that the tongue is going to close to the roof of the mouth in at the back of the mouth then if we look at uh, this is actually uh, the mid high uh, high back vowel just look at the uh, low back vowel which is uh, actually present in father and it is actually it will be actually more visible quite visible as compared to the other one because it is an open vowel as well the mouth is actually quite open in this vowel uh, uh. Uh, yes yes so clearly visible which was actually we was we were talking about in the front vowels in front vowels the tongue was bulging or tongue was making the dome just here just here tongue was bulging just here but now you can see that the uh, tongue is just bulging bulging mean like this 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 so bulging is just at the back Point, uh, of the position and actually it is uh, because it is the low back vowel and you can say there is a lot of difference uh, there is a lot of space between the roof of the mouth and between the uh, body of the tongue so therefore it is the low back vowel and uh, the last one uh, which is actually u 
not much difference between this and this one once again it, it will not be as visible huh. once again but it is a, actually a mid high back vowel as we have described it uh, so the, these were the front vowels and the back vowels and we have tried to visualize them uh, to some ex, uh, extent it is better if you pronounce these all vowels in front of uh, the mirror and keeping in mind that which are the front vowels which are the back vowels keeping in mind the position of the tongue so once you practice it again and again so you will uh, we, uh, you will use to it and you you can remember it easily So now we shall look at the lip gesture or the position of the vowel. You may have noticed uh, that in all these vowels uh, we can look at that uh, positions of the lips that some in some vowel the lips were rounding actually in some vowel the lips were spreaded. So the position of the lips considerably change in vowels as we know and uh, as an example of good, should, food. So you uh, we can notice uh, that in all these words the vow uh, and the vowels in all these words are actually while pronouncing these vowels lips are closer together but in some American accents it is not the case and actually why it is uh, so that they do not pronounce it like good but they pronounce it like good 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 so you so they do not actually uh, uh, round their lips and while uh, instead of pronouncing should they say should 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 so they do not actually uh, keep their uh, lips round uh, if we look at the position of uh, our lips in the mirror while saying these vowels like he'd he'd had had father good food so uh, we, we we shall notice uh, that how the lips are moving as well with the jaw as as well as the tongue and in the last uh, these two words so there is a movement of lips in addition to the movement that occurs between uh, because of the lowering and raising of jaw so we know that uh, we have already talked about in the previous lectures that our lower jaw is more mobile lower jaw actually moves uh, very much and actually it is the lower jaw or the lower part of the vocal tract which actually which is actually more mobile and we pronounce these sounds all sounds uh, by moving these uh, the lower jaw so uh, we know uh, that when, when we say like father had so our, our jaw is actually moving downward uh, so in addition uh, with this movement there is an other movement in such uh, words like in uh, in such uh, vowels like oo and this movement is actually called lip rounding once again i'll show you uh, through the visualization it is uh, usually most noticeable in the inward movement so actually uh, lips are you, you will notice that the movement of the lips is at the corner of the lips and the movement is sometimes uh, a slight bit inward although your lips are sometimes uh, a little bit forward as well but as they are forward the corners are moving inward so such vowels are called rounded vowel and the other vowels are called unrounded vowels so this is once again the example of Ooh. Ooh. Ooze. What I want to show you is this thing. Ooh. Ooh. So you can uh, you can see that the inward corners of the lips are actually uh, going in. Uh, are meeting together and there is a uh, lips are actually uh, going inward from the corners Ooh. yes yes and just to show you from uh, the other AV yes once again these corners are moving inward so therefore such vowels are called 
the unrounding vowel, uh, unrounded vowels and the uh, all other vowels which are not actually rounded uh, these are called uh, unrounded vowels when lips are spreaded so just look at in this vowel e e so uh, lips are Medium. going here uh, lips are Happy. more spreaded in such vowels so uh, now we will briefly discuss that three factors in the description of vowels which we have already discussed that while describing vowels uh, we uh, look at the height of the tongue uh, that either it is high or mid high or mid low or low then we also look at the front or back position of the tongue either the tongue uh, the tongue is uh, is creating the bulge in the tongue is creating in the front of the mouth or back of the mouth and uh, this is called the front back position of the tongue we shall also look at vowels in this way and the third factor we describe is the degree of lip rounding how much the lips are rounded or uh, either the lips are rounded or not so actually uh, it is difficult to become the uh, become or have the awareness of tongue positions in vowels as uh, we have tried to uh, visualize it but it is actually a little bit difficult uh, but we can uh, get some impression as i have discussed by the position of the jaw while saying this forward so when we say this forward like he he had and had so we shall notice that how the jaw is moving from one position to the other downward actually and the difference between uh, front and back vowels can be felt by contrasting words such as he who he uh, just continuously say he who he who he who and you will notice that in he your come is uh, going uh, come is uh, your tongue is coming uh, your tongue is coming uh, front in the front of the mouth and in who your tongue is uh, going back of the mouth so the tongue going from front to back as you say he who he who he who and uh, um, the lips are also uh, rounded in who but not in he now uh, uh, we shall also uh, discuss the problems uh, in such description of vowels so in other words as we have discussed earlier that uh, the vowels cannot be described very accurately in terms of uh, the articulation so what are the problems uh, let discuss those and just before coming to that topic i would also like to show you uh, show you uh, that uh the book has also described some position of the lip rounding as well uh, that uh, uh, the lip position for vowels 2 3 and 4 are uh, between 1 and 5 so one goes to the here one goes here so uh, we, we can notice that the the vowel in food which is the no, vowel number 7 it, it it is actually more rounded and you can notice uh, that there is uh, only uh, a short space a less space as compared to pronouncing the vowels in uh, in heat so therefore we can also describe lips rounded in uh, rounding in this way as well so what was the problems so here actually it is uh, the whole uh, all these seven vowels and their position and just to erase this so uh, this is the relative position of the highest point of the tongue in vowels he hid had had father good food which we have already discussed so what is the problem we call all these vowels uh, which are actually present in he hid hid had had and had we call all these vowels as front vowels but either they seem uh, they are in the same position no they are not in the same position it is slightly backward it is more it is uh, also slightly backward it is actually a little bit forward we call all these vowels as front vowels so the description is not actually accurate 
then we also say that all these vowels 5 6 and 7 all these are back vowels but they are sufficiently uh, far away from each other but we call all these vowels as back vowels then if we say uh, uh, the height we say that the vowel uh, in heed is uh, a high a front high uh, a high vowel uh, or front high vowel but we also say uh, that the vowel in the word food is actually also high back vowel but once again the height in heed eed is not actually the same height as in uh, in the word uh, in the vowel u so what do we mean by height so once again we uh, are not sure by this diagram actually in uh, many books it is called uh, the vowels quadrilateral and actually this is actually the articulatory position of the vowels and acoustically vowels are a little bit uh, different uh, different as compared to these position and we can describe vowels uh, acoustically in a more effic efficient way which we shall describe in the incoming lectures so first the vowels classified as high do not have the same high tongue height as we have described that both of these vowels are considered high vowel but the height is not same we also say uh, that uh, in the degree of backness uh, but these all all these three vowels are uh, combinedly called back vowels but they have not the same degree of backness thirdly uh, when we shall uh, we can uh, we see in the figure 1.3 1.13 that this kind of specification disregard considerable difference in the shape of the tongue in front vowels and in back vowels so we cannot actually uh, show uh, the tongue position as well as how the pharynx is actually compressing or spreading in all these vowels Uh, the width of uh, in which vowels uh, the uh, uh, pharynx width increases and in which vowels pharynx width decreases so we are not sure of these aspects in articulation so vowels uh, actually are not uh, are actually more accurate accurately cannot be described in uh, described in terms of their articulation so uh, this was the problem so these are the references uh, and all the videos were from Oxford Advanced Learning Dictionary except the X-ray film. So the next lecture will be about the sound, the sounds of vowels. So in the next lecture, we shall look at the vowels acoustically. So I hope you have understood it. I have tried my best. But if you have any confusion or any problem, so you can ask me in the comment section. So I'll try to solve it. So. Uh, if you have uh, if you have understood this lecture so you may like this video you may subscribe this channel don't forget to give your feedback remember in your prayers jazakallah khairan and thank you